Okay. First, I just want to thank all my fellow commissioners. We've, um, first, it's, I'm very, very grateful and appreciative of who you are, but over the past weeks, and especially these past immediate weeks, I want to thank you for your commitment and dedication. Thursday, last Thursday, we did conduct a meeting on the safety protocols for the casinos. That meeting we had anticipated being about two and a half hours because of the thorough work that you conduct, that you were willing to participate in. We went six hours. And at the conclusion of that meeting, I did. And, and I know it was a, a, a good long six hours with only a 20 minute break. So I wanna first applaud you and thank you for that. Yesterday, we had a very successful meeting, uh, a really a round table discussion with all the stakeholders on horse racing. And again, very thorough, very thoughtful discussion and wanna thank you. Out of last Thursday's meeting, I asked Karen Wells, our interim executive director, if she would be uh, work with the team to reduce all the issues that we had really formed a consensus around into the guidelines. I want to thank Loretta Lilios, Bruce Burke, um, Bruce Ban, and Burke Kane for their efforts, and of course the entire IEB team under Karen's leadership for reducing those guidelines to a document that we can really work off from today. What I asked was if they could sort out those a few issues that we were really struggling with and to find out really what's the prevailing guidance from Massachusetts for the industries to get a sense as to where the public health metrics are here in Massachusetts as well as to look across the country and focus probably on the most restrictive of um, the uh, guidelines out there because we were quite well informed on what was really working on a norm um, across the country. So uh, I want to thank uh, Loretta for turning around the document so quickly. It gives us a great document today with the goal of hopefully being able to resolve those outstanding issues and formulate a guideline that we can um, move this process for reopening along. Does that all make sense? Yes, Madam Chair, if I could just ask uh, whoever is joining our meeting whose phone number ends in 7758, could you please mute your phone, please? Thank you. Yeah, anybody who can mute, I, I, I promise you my dog is still healthy. But he apparently has been whisked away. So, uh, but otherwise, if we could mute, I just can't do that um, ordinarily. So anybody who is not speaking other than the Immediate, my immediate commissioners, even if you would like to unmute, thanks. That really helps because it's important also for our video uh, taping. Thank you. Some uh, commissioners, does that sound like a, a plan for today's discussion before we turn it over to Karen? Yes, it does. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, there you are, Karen. I see oh. you now. Thank you so much. Uh, Karen, uh, if you could get started with as, uh, for an executive update, you have your whole team here today to help us get through this. Yes, I'll and I, I would definitely like to echo the chair's comments about the uh, outstanding work by Loretta Lilios and Bruce Band and Bruce, Bruce Kane and their entire team putting this information together, uh, collecting information from other jurisdictions, and putting synthesizing everything from public health officials from government entities into these guidelines was an enormous amount of work and they've done a tremendous job so i just want to commend them uh, on that endeavor so right now you have in your packet and that you've uh, been able to review the document which lists uh, the minimum state requirements for the initial phase three opening of gaming establishments so the way it's structured for the discussion today uh, we have it written out in a document and then highlighted in gray are those issues that were not definitively decided by the commission at the last, uh, as the chair mentioned, six hour meeting. So you can see uh, most of the information was, uh, there was a consensus at that, at that meeting. So uh, as a preliminary matter, it, it would be helpful to me to understand if the commissioners agree with the document that the, the information that is not in the gray shaded area you're you're comfortable and consistent that that's consistent with the, what we thought was the consensus from the last meeting 
And then the next step would be to go over uh, those four areas where there seemed to be uh, some uh, a request to, for the staff to go back and get some more information and identify what would be consistent with uh, the outstanding guidance that the governor's office uh, has for either other industries or what they may do for casinos. So those four, those four areas were beverage service, uh, distance and gaming positions at slot machines, distance at gaming positions at table games and occupancy levels. So what I would suggest for the conversation today is to start to make sure that we're, the commission is comfortable with the rest of the document and then go through those one by one. The IEB has identified uh, for the first three, the beverage service and the social distancing for slots and table games, what appears to be the consistent, what would be consistent with the governor's guidance with other agencies and what we've identified would make sense in Massachusetts. So there's uh, proposed language there. And then for occupancy levels, there's uh, some options for you to look at. Uh, so uh, at this point, Loretta, do you have any, any other thoughts or any other comments for the, for the commission before they get started looking at this? I think you outlined it uh, well, uh, Karen, and uh, good morning to everyone. If, if it would be helpful, for me to do a, a three minute uh, summary of those points uh, that you have already reached and that we believe you've already reached an informal consensus on. Uh, I could do that uh, to help orient you uh, and the public, um, but uh, I am in agreement that the four matters uh, that are outstanding for your continued consideration are uh, as outlined by Karen on the, uh, the beverage service, the distancing on the spots, the distancing on the table games and the overall occupancy limits for this initial stage of the phase three reopening. Can, can I make a suggestion, Loretta? Uh, sure. Perhaps because this is our second time really of reviewing this document and, and much of the consensus, the items that we did reach a consensus on are, are repeated. Could we ask the commissioners if there are particular items that are outside the four that Karen outlined that they still have, that they're seeking clarification on that rather than go through all of them? Sure, makes Thank sense, you. yep. Uh, and I do, want to, I do want to note that I know that we did not come to a full consensus on hand sanitizer being required at the beginning of, at, at, on entryway, so perhaps that is one area we might want to just discuss um, that was outstanding. Commissioner Zuniga, um, I don't know if you had picked up on that, but I think right now it's yeah, it's not a requirement as put forth in the document. So um, <clears throat> with that said, is there any particular item outside of the floor that you, you want, that you would like to have clarified? Commissioner I, I Bryan? Some that they're not really clarifications so much as questions that, you know, maybe nobody is concerned about. I know we had talked a lot about making sure the pandemic safety officer was someone who actually was going to hold some level of responsibility for compliance. Um, and when we get to page two, um, 1C, we talk about the compliance department being responsible for adherence to the plan. I don't know if we also want to add some reference to the pandemic safety officer, even if that person falls outside the compliance department. So we do, um, uh, Commissioner, we do on page five in subsection N talk about the pandemic safety officer and that that person shall work in conjunction with the compliance department and provide the compliance department with a log of all material communications. Would you, are you also suggesting that we should link uh, this to the page two language? Under I, compliance. I'm suggesting that based on my takeaway from the Thursday conversation, but maybe I had an overly um, restrictive view on how we were going to define accountability. I don't think it's a bad idea to, to have that redundancy, um, right? In, order, in other words, that, that we want to make sure compliance and that particular officer are working uh, closely and bring it, uh, have it right. in both places, Commissioner. Right, and my, my concern is I'm not going to be surprised if the pandemic safety offers someone outside compliance. And so I didn't want there to be any internal conflict. Okay, um, we can add some language uh, there. So that would be added language to 3A, Commissioner O'Brien? Uh, no, it would be to 1C, I believe. 
Yep. And let them oh, got it. The okay. Yeah. And then on hand sanitizer, just while we're still on page two, provide hand sanitizing at points of entry. I know, Loretta, you had raised that as one where we we really didn't reach a clear consensus. How are we feeling today on that? And then I'll go back to you, Commissioner O'Brien. Uh, Commissioner Zuniga, on 1B, at one point uh, on Thursday, I don't want to, um, I, I remember clearly you're suggesting that maybe it should be a requirement and that also made sense. And then there was an idea, well, maybe it should be optional. Well, I, I'm fine the way this currently reads. My point from last time was uh, one in which uh, we could focus, if we're gonna be more restrictive, we'd, I'd rather we do it at the, at the entrance. I understand. But, but if there's gonna be option both at the entrance and at the table, and people are going to be encouraged. I, I, I'm fine. There's there's, okay, there's layers there's layers of protection. That Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, Commissioner O'Brien. Did you have other um, particular points that you wanted to go over? Um, page five, when we got to additional measures for the gaming area, um, sub D, where we talk about just sort of guidance on where we think lines might form. We talk about some of the ways we would hope they would address that and anticipate. Uh, I don't know if we wanted to include anything that specifically referenced the use of floor marking so people um, who may not have an inherent sense of space would know about where six feet is. Yes, we can, we can add that. I think we did have that language on the floor markings around cage queuing. Right. But we can add it here as well. Um, and then, Two, two other points. One, um, just seeking confirmation that the, the verbiage on ballet service complies with the law. That's sub H. Uh, this language uh, I pulled at, um, uh, Jackie Crum directed me to this language and it is in um, the uh, governor's, uh, uh, governor's language. Um, okay. I'm trying to recall exactly where, but I did pull it from that language. Okay. The and then the last language. question I had was notes um, that I just didn't address the last time we met on Thursday, where one of the other jurisdictions or more of them said no coat check for the time being. Um, it's not really relevant so much this time of year, but I didn't know if that was something we wanted to address also as we go through finishing this. That's just have, food I haven't I haven't seen that referenced in others, but perhaps it is because we're in New England. Uh, perhaps either Jackie, have you seen that uh, in other jurisdictions? And do you have a suggestion? It's actually in the lodging guidelines for Massachusetts. And can, uh, so, so it's could already you, prohibited, and yeah. that would carry over to the casino by its nature. Or do we need to restate? I think we should just restate. Right. Okay, we can do that. Great, thank you. We can just pull it from the others. Uh, and we're, someone is I'm, keeping a careful I'm, record of these um, amendments. I'm Marty, Madam Chair. Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm actually curious now, uh, is there a code check regularly? Um, Jackie or Lance or? There is a not... code check. It's, it's not in the casino. It's uh, more connected to the hotel side of things, but obviously at this time of year, it's, it's not uh, relevant. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Commissioner O'Brien. Do you have any others? No. On that, the, on those areas, that was it. So on, um, and then there, for the other commissioners on the matters that were lifted as a matter that we reached consensus or anything else outstanding, do you have? Commissioner Cameron, you're all set. I am. I'm all set. I That's think fun. Um, the document is is really concise and brings all of our thoughts together. So no, I, I, um, I, I'm fine. Thank you. Excellent. And Commissioner Stebbins, you're all set too then. Uh, I am. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. So I think um, Commissioner Zunica, seems uh, you're all set as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll just make this comment now. Uh, I think I'm not exactly sure if it's referenced here, but uh, I think there should be an, an acknowledgement uh, that um, <sighs> these may not end up being the final uh, as we go and implement these reopenings. We are going to have to come back and revise, adjust, 
you know, tweak where necessary, rethink. So um, I, I, think know, I, I, I think that, that there should be a, an acknowledgement or a policy statement that um, this is a, a work in progress. We're gonna learn how crowds really behave when it comes to a casino in New England. Uh, or, or things like that. Uh, perhaps we should frame it that these, these will be guidelines for the opening and then perhaps we should have a provision that says we will be revisiting on a certain cadence. I'm not sure if we want to establish that cadence for the guidelines overall and then maybe have particular cadence for items that we're going to address uh, perhaps today. But perhaps we should include as a policy statement that it is subject to change but this the goal for today is to have a document that will be the document that will inform the opening subject, of course, to federal and other state uh, guidelines coming out of uh, Governor Baker's administration, uh, guidance yeah. or, or rulings. Yeah, I, I think that's a really good idea. And I don't know that it needs to be a regular cadence, though, as much as if an issue comes up, we, as you use, uh, Chair, if you use the line nimble, and we can remain nimble. We heard that uh, yesterday from uh, Penn's director of racing um, that um, two days later they had to make a change at one of their facilities because it didn't work as they anticipated. So I do think it's incumbent upon us to um, to really pay attention and if there are issues to, to get into a meeting quickly and make a change. Excellent. Maybe then rather than a regular cadence, we could consider um, of course, being ready to act on any particular item, but perhaps we might want to ask for regular reporting on how how uh, the reopening is going. Yes, very and, good and, idea. And it will be great if there are no issues, but in the event that they, they are, there's a public health permissions that allow us to, to lift some restrictions, we would be able to, to hear those reports then so uh, as we get in Loretta and uh, Karen as we get into the next part of the discussion if you could keep that in mind what might make a practical sense for us to hear from the licensees as um, once reopening occurs what kind of reporting cadence we want and of course remain nimble in terms of being able to adjust these guidelines when necessary if they become unworkable or things shift in the favorable light from the public health perspective. Okay, all right, Loretta, so you can guide us through the, the, the four difficult areas. And then of course, at the end, we'll revisit the entire document in case somebody has something else they want to add. Sure, so uh, the first item uh, that you had discussed last week, but was uh, left for further discussion is on the, on the beverage service in the gaming area. Uh, so the IEB uh, has provided some uh, direction now, uh, and in providing the direction, we have uh, balanced a number of uh, factors. Uh, one is uh, the fact that Governor Baker's administration uh, did move the opening of bars from phase three to phase four for bars uh, without food service uh, and described them as uh, more akin to, to nightclubs. Balancing that with the representation at least from at least some of the uh, licensees and the understanding that beverage service uh, is uh, viewed as integral uh, to uh, the gaming uh, experience and also balancing that uh, the requirement that the Commission has reached consensus on uh, for the wearing of masks uh, while uh, on the gaming area by both employees and patrons and so with those uh, factors in mind uh, the IEB has set forth in the document the suggestion that beverage service be allowed in the gaming area and limited to guests who are engaged in gaming at a slot machine or a table game, whereby guests would raise and lower their masks for drinking purposes only, but that guests would not be permitted to move about the gaming area with their beverages. Uh, so this uh, recommendation uh, is uh, an effort to balance uh, those multiple uh, factors uh, and um, is a uh, restrictive measure 
uh, but not as restrictive as uh, prohibiting uh, beverages in the gaming area. Could I ask Loretta the, my only thought on this one was the, the two to four service I think is restricted to people actively engaged in gaming, is that correct? That's right. I, I think I would feel more comfortable sticking with that language. Yeah. You know, I can foresee someone maybe grabbing a drink and maybe sitting in yep. a slot machine to drink without finishing, um, yep. without actually actively gaming. So I just think it, we're, we're cleaner all the way around for everyone's sake if we keep the same language. Okay. I'd like to add one, one comment on, on this item as we just think about it globally. I have since learned independently, I was able to, I think, update maybe Karen on this, that I've learned that for the restaurants, the idea of being able to remove the mask altogether while you're dining, as opposed to having to lower and raise the mask is actually um, really driven by a, a health consideration. It is apparent, there's apparently more risk to lowering and raising the, the mask in order to drink, and that the experts would actually prefer that masks remain lowered while they're drinking so that they're not touching the, their face. Patrons aren't touching their mask and face repeatedly. So um, that while they are actively gaming and sitting at the table, if they have a drink, keeping the mask lowered would actually be preferred by public health specialists if I'm understanding correctly the guidance I received. <clears throat> That's that's interesting. Uh, I guess I, I had not sort of thought of it that way. I um, I wanted to point out something that um, that perhaps last time was sort of alluded to, and and I think this applies to all beverages. I, for one, uh, take longer to drink a cup of coffee than sadly uh, um, <laughs> beer. Um, and 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 the point about the experience is that you know you have anybody at a place of recreation and and they're likely going to get different drinks um, including alcoholic but um, I, I have a bit of a question relative to uh, there are or there have been in the past um, uh, free soft drinks um, um, you know that guests can go and uh, help themselves to what is the plan for that and how would that work with the way these uh, currently reads towards uh, beverage service? So Commissioner Zuniga, so that I understand the question, are you wondering will there be other than alcoholic beverages being served to those who are actively gaming? Is that yes, I, well that, that happens as a matter of course. There's a lot right. of people who just prefer a, a cup of water, which is fine. Right. So then um, the next question is, is, is the, uh, the bar, available for soft drinks still going to be accessible or I think I understood that there will be no food or beverage uh, available on the gaming floor. Could the licensees confirm that? Well, there's for, for self access for self access. I thought self-serving in general under the governor's current guidelines are prohibited. So yeah. you would be able to have a self-serve area. No self-service anywhere. Could we just confirm that for Commissioner Zuniga? Licensees? Uh, Jack. Sure. So we don't have any self-serve uh, locations right now, but uh, that's correct. We would not have any self-serve. The only question I have is if people come in with a bottle of water, um, you know, and, and we do obviously have cocktail servers who serve non-alcoholic drinks as well. So would that be prohibited too? Yeah, the that's, that's, the, that's the reason of me bringing this question. It's like that we should get on the mindset that we're talking about any beverage. It whether is, it's alcoholic is, or is beverage service by its term of art limited to alcohol or any beverage? Any beverage. It's, then, it's then the C would cover it. But in the way the document is written, there's no differentiation between alcoholic beverage or non-alcoholic beverage. It's the idea of keeping the masks on, everyone. It doesn't matter what you're drinking. It's keeping the mask on when you're in indoors and you're not seated. That's the distinction. Yeah, well, I, I guess I was, I was uh, thinking of the restriction to be allowed to move. It, it becomes with a beverage. Imagine a cup of coffee or a, or a bottle of water, as Jackie just pointed out. It becomes a point of enforcement. Um, right. So we should just be cognizant of that. 
that people are going to say, why, why can I just bring my water, you know, to the other table? I'm going over there. Well, this, well, this gets back to, you know, the point of a good, strong communications plan. We are changing some of the habits and behaviors of, of gaming patrons. I'm assuming all of our licensees are happy to refresh or provide you with a new beverage. If you're just getting up and moving to a different gaming uh, position, uh, but again, this kind of comes back to, you know, a strong communications plan so that patrons understand what the expectation is around something that might have been a traditional behavior before. Commissioner Zunica? Yeah, no, I, I think that's, that's all fine. I cannot just envision, um, you know, the, the, um, the need for uh, enforcement uh, of some kind gentle first but um you know we're, we're, we're dealing with public that is going to be um you know in many ways used to other um you know used to normality and after this you know period wanting to crave some of that normality so um i just need to i just want to point out that uh, that this is this this is going to be something that you know we're going to have to see how it goes yeah, I, I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Zuniga that I do see this as um, somewhat difficult. I'm thinking of slots players who sometimes feel like if they move to a different uh, machine, their luck will change or whatever. They just prefer to play another uh, machine at this time, and they're moving three seats down um, to enforce not taking your beverage with you three seats down, I think would be somewhat difficult. Um, I do understand not loitering around the gaming floor, not moving to a different uh, portion altogether of, uh, say, from slots over to table, which is somewhat of a distance in, in lots of cases. I do understand that, but I'm just wondering um, how we want this enforced if it's just moving a couple of slot machines. I think the natural tendency is to take your beverage. Well, I think there's a couple things. I think that's why I wanted actively gaming because they have to make that distinction between two to four for most of the alcohol anyway, and they're experienced with that. And I also do think to Mr. Zuniga's point, there's going to be an educational component to this because this is not the only bar that option that you're going to be able to get. This is not what this is. You know, this is a very different experience right now in the reopening phase. And so to Commissioner Zuniga's point, it is going to be a learning experience and an education experience because saying, oh, I'm just going down three to get, you know, and then milling around, to me, you've got to have the bright line. Um, again, they do it for the most part between two and four in the morning. So it's not like it's completely unfathomable. I would like to hear more about the two to four in the morning if I think folks are allowed to move seats can, to continue can, with a different slot machine, let's say. So okay. I don't know that it's let, such a let, yeah. bright line there. Well, I think let's, let's just see if we can um, figure out what we're agreeing on. I think that we all, when we say actively gaming, Commissioner O'Brien, I'm using that as a reminder that you have to be seated. I think what we're really trying to figure out is in this context of the public health um, pandemic, we know right now that the guidance coming out of our state, given where we are right now, public health metrics is that they are comfortable having patrons seated and eating and drinking if social distancing is accomplished. So let's presume social distance, we, we, have, we manage that issue aside. Right now, we all agree that if you are going to have a drink in your hand, can we agree that we acknowledge, regardless of enforcement difficulties, that we need to limit it to being seated, as opposed to milling around, notwithstanding the fact of shifting seats to another game. Do we agree that ideally, without the challenges that they need to be seated versus being able to mill around with a drink. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and, and the licensees, you know, do this as a matter of course, not just from two to four. They will offer you a drink if you if they, they first check on you, they mm -hmm. see that you're already engaged in gambling, they say I'll come back and get your order and they come back and do that and serve that. So Commissioner Stebbins, are you are you comfortable with that at this juncture for the where we are presuming, you know, phase three reopening for the casinos, 
that drinking needs to be seated versus in any way standing and milling around. In light of all the guidance that Loretta and, and Karen have outlined and the teams outlined and that we also know from our own research. Yeah, I, and you know, I think Commissioner O'Brien makes some good reference to you know how we instituted the two to four. Um, the bigger point here is I'm getting up, I'm moving a seat. It's not so much we're worried about where the drink is traveling. We want to make sure that it's not lowering the mask as they might be moving seats. So if we reinforce drink while you're at your gaming position as opposed to just drinking anywhere else on the floor. Um, might strike a balance from what we're trying to achieve. Right, so in terms of what we're probably, let me ask again, I understand that um, there's a, quite a psychology involved in the gambling, and if the machine isn't cooperating, Bruce will, Bruce <laughs> Band will appreciate this, and the other machine gets free and it looked like it was a good night for that machine, the instinct is the player may want to shift. I do know that well, I, I, first I should clarify, is that the goal to make sure in order to keep social distancing um, enforced, that there won't be a lot of milling around um, uh, behind the slots machine with, with non-gaming uh, players. Is that the idea that we're envisioning Bruce Band and others? I think that's the goal, but I think I, again... Oh, just a second, I'm again, I'm just have, um, um, sure, Bruce? Yeah, I, I think that that's the goal is to have people not milling around with their mask pulled down, I think is the main goal with that. Right. And they won't, won't have drinks unless they're seated. Now, if they've shifted from one seat to another, we've identified there is perhaps a little bit of a, of a potential for that. If they're shifting around to the machine on the other end of the casino floor with their drinks, are we comfortable saying they should probably leave their drink and somebody or discard their drink before they move on? So can uh, I can I suggest some language to yeah. see if this hits everybody what we're talking about? The last language in C, <clears throat> if it were written to say guests are not to be allowed to carry or drink beverages about the gaming area, um, it complements you. It must be actively gaming. Yeah and reinforces um, you're not supposed to be milling around with it or drinking it. I, I, I like that language. I think it does kind of um, clarify what we're saying. And I, I don't want to overthink this. If that's right, that's right. right. I don't if want, we don't want to be the constantly looking for people moving. No. I, I do think the general principle is really important and, uh, and that does explain it and reinforce what we're talking about. Right. As long as we all are in agreement that it makes sense not at this juncture. And again, this is an active document. And let's hope we can give relief sooner than later, because that's going to mean things are improving from a public health perspective. But the idea is not walking around with your drink. So I, I welcome that, that amendment. Um, if we could also, I would also Here, can, ask. Can, can, can you ask a question? You Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Seth. I was going to ask uh, Eileen to repeat it, but um, go ahead. Thanks. If you don't mind, it's a question and a point. I, I, think, um, I think we're generally aligned. I think the challenge is with many of these is, is enforcement and, and who's going to enforce. Um, the active gaming piece that Commissioner O'Brien um, raises, I think, is a, is a great point. But the way we control that is through when we serve the drink. Once they've been served, where they go with it is a real challenge, enforcement challenge for us to monitor. We would, the, the amount of staff that I think we would need to realistically enforce other than perhaps signage and telling people when they get it presents enormous challenges from an enforcement standpoint. So um, I, I think we need, really is challenging. I think we could, we would be much more comfortable with a requirement that um, the beverages are only served to those actively gaming, like the 2 a.m. to 4 a.m. piece, because then we have control over it. Um, and we could encourage through signage, but um, it's a real, real challenge um, to track individuals, what they have in their hands and where they go and intercept. And, and I think we, 
practically could be looking at um, uh, some unintended ramifications that stem from that. Does everybody understand the distinction he's making? Yeah. Yeah. yeah my yes. concern again, though, is you know bars were moved to phase four, and my fear is if we don't have this out here, like it's being proposed, there are going to be people that are going to try to treat it like a bar experience and wander around. So. Well, I acknowledge the enforcement challenge. I think if that's the rule and the messaging and the education, you know, we can see what's going from there. But I also question if we're not running afoul of what's allowable. If we don't do that. Right. At, at this, oh, um, Burke, were you were you going to add in just now, Mr. King? Okay. Um, I think uh, I think a set that you know we are we are. We are very aware of the state uh, paradigm here in Massachusetts right now. And as uh, Commissioner O'Brien just said, we're, we're really trying to offer guidance that works in sync with that, with where we are at this moment with respect to public health metrics. And in terms of enforcement, you know, we understand this is difficult. We will be, you know, we have, we will be monitoring and we will be asking for reports on the challenges and we can revisit. I, I think it's important for us to make sure that we don't let nervousness around enforcement somehow um, <clears throat> influence the restrictions that we, we should impose at this moment. Yeah, I think that's well said. I, I think um, maybe with the edit that uh, Commissioner O'Brien suggested, we, we accomplished this and we again monitor. Yeah. I, I would point out that unlike bars, and I understand that there's a lot of similarities, but there's a, an incentive of sorts to keep you in a place if you're gaming. When, when you know, um, It's only in that transition piece that I think uh, becomes um, you know, so it becomes a challenge, but I, I don't think it's in the scheme of things. I don't think it's a huge, huge part of the time that people uh, are going to risk. Could could I ask for a couple more amendments to be considered? If we could, um, instead of saying lower and raise their mass for drinking only, say lower their mass for drinking only, and then I'm wondering how we deal with drinks that are left. Um, Whose obligation is it to dispose of any? Oh, the, the bartenders, like usually. Always, yeah. they would be going back. That's what they do normally. Or the, the wait staff. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Folks on the floor are going to be cleaning the equipment, are going to be probably also picking up empty glasses or half full glasses or whatever is part of their responsibility. I mean, I wonder if, uh, and, and I, I think uh, I'm, I'm in agreement with uh, Commissioner Cameron. I don't think we need to overthink this. And, uh, you know, there's any way, many ways in which they could kind of deal with the public. Sarah, I'll bring your drink over there or something. Um, so, that's, so, that's, that's, you know. so that's a good point. Rather than overthinking, Loretta, do you want to read back what you think, see, um, based on this conversation, would be amended to read? Beverage services allowed in the gaming area and she'll be limited to guests who are actively engaged in gaming, although I will check the exact statutory language there, um, but uh, I think it's guests who are actively engaged in gaming at a slot machine or table game and lower their mass for drinking purposes only. Guests are not to be allowed to carry or bring beverages with them when moving about the gaming area. Um, it was actually going to say to carry or drink. It was reiterating that they're not carry or drink. drinking as they kind of okay. slide down a slot machine or two. So okay. guests, guests are not, um, I mean, are not to be allowed to carry or drink beverages when moving about the gaming oh. area. Okay. All right. Are we, we won't vote on that right now, but can we move ahead to the second right now? I see not, heads nodding. Excellent. Then good, we'll move on to social distancing on slots. They all sort of interact, so we might need to revisit things. So this is good. Let's move ahead. Okay, so at your last meeting, you discussed the three options that appear on page seven of this packet uh, for social distancing on slots. And the group A option 
gave maximum flexibility to the licensees to implement uh, measures to promote social distancing. Group B, the big takeaway from Group B was that every other slot machine would be disabled. In Group C, it was every two slot machines uh, would be disabled. So two disabled slot machines between operating slot machines. Ultimately, the IEB took into consideration here the prevalence in Massachusetts and federally of the six foot distancing measure uh, that, you know, through the CDC and uh, here in the Commonwealth, while at the same time uh, crediting the desire and uh, of the licensees to have some flexibility uh, in reconfiguring their floors. So the uh, suggestion from the IEB as appears in the document uh, now is to either require a minimum of six foot distancing between operating machines, or if there's not a six foot distance to install plexiglass dividers in a height of not less than six between operating slot machines. And at a minimum, every other slot machine would be disabled with the chairs removed from those disabled machines. Commissioner so, Sunika, do you want to start your thoughts? or I, I, did, I did have one comment. I, I did receive some information from the licensees uh, this morning that the six foot height on the uh, plexiglass, there may be a supply issue with respect to that. So I don't know if any of the licensees want to comment, but it may be that they can't get the six feet, but they could get a few inches shorter than that and maybe lift it off the floor to get the six foot height, but not have the six uh, feet go all the way to the bottom. So that, that just was a practical issue that came to my attention this morning. Right. Is, is one of the licensees going to speak or do you want us to comment on that piece? Uh, staff, uh, Commissioner Cameron, thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Stratton. Sure, thank you. Um, yes, we, we are having some challenges, but we believe we could accomplish um, one, we measured, it's actually one inch short of six feet off the ground. Um, from floor to top height, we would be at five feet, 11 inches. Seth, couldn't something be installed to cover most of, like off the floor, maybe attached to, I don't know, some cabinet? So that, you know, we don't need it all the way to the floor. We need it close to where somebody's head generally is. I was also going to make the point that um, I think a measure should be, you know, in reference to the, the, the height of the chair. If you are sitting in a lower chair or a higher chair, that height of the plexiglass is that much more relevant. Yes, as we understand the requirement and we've been rolling out in other properties, it's, it's really the height, the standing height, um, and you're not looking at six feet pieces on top of the tables, but trying to cover the average, you know, where the face and mouth are on the average person, that range, and then um, as they would sit down, have plenty of, of room. And so I think the, if you think about it, six feet from the floor, yeah. if you think about that, it's a six foot measure from the floor. So if they were requiring it for restaurants, it's six feet from the floor. So it extends, I think a table typically is around a, sort of three feet, if I'm right, it would be a three feet. But the idea is, um, to achieve, you know, a six foot barrier starting from the ground up right but but my point is that i i don't think we need the first foot from the ground up to be covered in plexiglass i know it needs to be attached to something so if it's not attached to the floor and it, it's attached to a cabinet let's say um does that does that mean that the supply issue goes away that you can get by with a five foot plexiglass again that is not uh, uh, but that, that reaches all the way to six feet, but not with the first foot. 
Yeah, I, I hear your question. And I think that the issue, at least that we're confronting at MGM was we already procured and designed these and they are significant, the pieces are less than six feet, commissioner, um, but they're attached to the tables and the way they're attached, the total height combined um, is, happens to be, at least for the ones we've installed, five feet and 11 inches um, from the floor um, because we were not working off of a, a six foot exact guideline when we procured it. Um, so, and, and it's not something we can just raise up um, easily. So I, I, I think substantively we're there, but unfortunately we're an inch short from a, an exact six feet. But let's go ahead with the discussion on the six feet. Um, it sounds like this might be a unique problem to- Bruce, I, I, Bruce I, want to say something? Yeah, I think uh, the, the problem that we were made aware of this morning was really more uh, a freestanding plexiglass stand, uh, stand that uh, one of the properties looked at and their base uh, made it uh, you know, less than, than six feet. So there wasn't really an attachment to the machine with this plexiglass stand. It was the base to the plexiglass uh, made it the whole, uh, whole height. Yeah, and if I could, um... While Seth is at 5'11", the best we can do with a tight turn is five feet, six inches. So we've got two options given our, our timelines right now. It's 5'5 five, five or 5'6". Five, and certainly to Commissioner Zuniga's comments, you know, we've been discussing what we could possibly engineer for an additional six inches. Um, we can certainly work on that, but I can tell you as we sit right now, um, we are at five feet, six inches. And, and is that... Uh that is just freestanding on the floor. Is, is that what you're talking about, Lance? So it comes prefabricated. And so I guess the best way to think of it is think of an old album that would slide into its sleeve. That's probably the best way to think of how this would be put together. Okay. I'm, and then what so is the height? You'd have to the base or go with what you have, or that is the height. We'd have to think of a, a way to fashion an additional six inches underneath that, which you know obviously brings some stability questions into play. So to be clear, these are you've this is this is an uh, a supply. Have you already procured this material or are these your suppliers? Have you done a nationwide search to see if you could get six foot? So I think it has less to do with six feet, we could certainly find that. It has to do with the combination of six feet and an incredibly quick timeline turnaround in which we would need to receive um, receive this plexiglass. Do any of our licensees have a, a photo or a, a drawing that we can see that would demonstrate what you're using and how it would be attached? Give you a minute if you have one. I'm, for what it's worth, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the five feet, six inches in terms of height, the majority, as I envision it, and I think the picture will be very helpful. Uh, when I sit down, it, I'm usually, you know, less than my height. And if you assume that, um, you know, a good portion of the person's torso and head is going to be covered, even in addition, uh, you know, with, 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 uh, with the five feet and um, six inches, inches height. I think there's been enough of um, sufficient, if you will, uh, mitigation when we overlay the every other slot machine and the mask wearing. And you also remember there's a chair at every slot machine, that, so the player would have to be seated. Yeah, that's 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 part of my point. That um, you know the, the the six feet is 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 um, perhaps my read when it comes to height is that it's it's you know everybody is around that height, um, you know, standing up. Um, in this case, you know, most of the patrons are gonna be sitting down and, and that suffices it for me. So um, are we right to assume that the, that it will be less at the top or less from the bottom coverage? In other words, I presume for the mount that's extending out, it starts from the floor and goes up. So the, the six inches is actually um, <clears throat> really 
making the inadequacy at the torso above as opposed to the torso below. Yeah, but 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 people aren't necessarily but, always standing up when they're playing. Licensees first. I, I I'm talking about actively gaming. You know, where is the risk? So, is it that there's? Am I right that you're not starting with a stand that will take the six inches and bring it up further? That is correct. We would be short on the top, not on the bottom. Thank you. And just to, to you know, add on, pile on to this, ours are five feet, ten and a half inches. <laughs> so, can I? Have we heard from any of the restaurants that they've had the same um, problem with supplies? Has anybody heard that? I haven't heard that. Uh, I think the difference with the restaurants is if you're separating a booth, what you can do is put the plexi on top of the booth or between the booths, so you're raising the whole thing up. It's not like there's plexi from the floor uh, just up. So they accommodate by three feet, Jackie? Yeah. On top of the booth? At least that's, that's what we've done in, in our restaurants. And that, and that and was there's an no important way to attach plexi to the side of a machine itself. We, we haven't seen that yet. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to make this a requirement and then um, uh, to the extent that this is an equal substitution, deal with a variance issue. What do, what do we think about that? Yeah. I, I, Best I'm effort is to get six feet. Hmm? I'm where you are, Kathy, just because we're going on with the, the guidance and the rules as we have them. And they've made this six foot rule to me you know, a de minimis, you know, is not as concerning to me. I'm not going to lie to you, Lance. Six inches seems a little more off than I might be comfortable with, but um, maybe we get some clarification from the advisory board on this too, Kathy, to your point. And so we make it, this would be the condition, and, and if need be, uh, this if it's a true substitution under our variance rules, I don't know if uh, Mr. Grossman's available. I'd understand that the executive director could give a variance if it's not in some way a diminishment of our uh, you know, a, 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 a substantive or substantial uh, diminishment of our restrictions. So she could issue a variance to a, a licensee on that if it somehow can't be achieved. That's right. To the extent it's in the internal controls, that's certainly how it would work. If this is a procedure outside of that, it might be a little bit different. So we would have to take a look at that. Well, we could just make it part of these process. This process. Exactly right. You could just make Thank it you. part of these rules. Thank you. Um, fellow commissioners, what do you think about that idea? Just so that we can make sure that our licensees are exploring every option to achieve the what is the preferred uh, public health preference right now. Um, and then we revisit it to see if it's a, uh, um, a substantial substitution from a health perspective. Let me learn a little bit more. That, 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 that's fine. I, I, I think one or one and a half inches is not already, I can tell you that for me, in my opinion, is not a substantial deviation. Um, you know, okay, six inches maybe, but, um, and, you know, not two, not one and a half. So Commissioner Stubb, I mean, Commissioner Zuniga, if, if the licensee raised it up, so it was lifted off, so for example, at PPC, if they lifted that off the floor six inches. So the six inches was at the bottom and then that with the rest of the plexiglass w went to the six foot uh, height. Are you comfortable with that? Absolutely. I, I don't think it's a six feet coverage that you need. I think you need it to the height of regularly six feet, which, which is the height of-, of, of And, and particularly the vulnerable spot of torso up as Commissioner yes. has emphasized. Right. So, okay. I'm not. I'm not transmitting anything through my feet. I can tell you that. <laughs> no, the conundrum is this sort of, sort of provides potentially a leeway in connection with the minimum six feet, but then to then ask for a variance beyond that, to your point, unless it's de minimis, when you start getting into six inches, that I don't know if that makes a difference or not substantively. The conundrum PPC has it sounds like is the stability of the plexiglass if you try to. Right. Raise it six inches. Yeah. But I like yeah. the chair's Please. approach. This is the rule right now, and then get guidance on 
Yes. But where, where is this rule right now? The it's restaurants just, mandate six feet. It's consistent with all the guidance that is out there currently in Massachusetts, Commissioner. And so if we adopt that rule, that will get us going in, during this interim, you know, over the next media hours, we can learn more about well, five, six, and as long as it's two feet and um, six inches above the torso, we're, that's going to be enough, particularly in light of the fact that there's not going to be a person right next to them. That might be, a, we might be able to achieve, that, you know, you might be able to learn that, that that's a reasonable um, standard. Well, that's, that's sort of where I am, but I understand, I understand, I understand the, the other's perspective. So we're thinking of um, keeping it this way, and um, but then saying uh, there is an ability to apply for a variance if, um, if this doesn't seem achievable, and then we evaluate each request. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think I'm hearing, and this is this is a really tough one. I'm hearing, in light of the fact that the six feet is the the, the norm right now, I'm I'm hearing six inches seems to not be de minimis and that presents what i'm hearing from today's licensees that that's a challenge for ppc in particular it's a couple of inches for encore and about an inch for mass um for mgm springfield so i i want to be careful that we don't talk about any variance in 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 this form because and with any variance, research would have to be done to determine whether it's a fair substitution. So what we could, you know, what I'm, I'm hoping that we lean against doing is, is, is uh, adopting a norm that's less than what's, uh, what we've learned is acceptable from Massachusetts at this time. And Chair, uh, this is Loretta, if I can jump in. The prevalence of the six foot distancing that appears throughout the federal and the state guidelines is, again, the lateral distancing between individuals. As for the vertical six foot barrier for the plexiglass, that appears for the indoor restaurant uh, situation. So we could also explore uh, how that is being rolled out and, and, and met uh, as well. I don't, I, I have seen the provision for the indoor seating for the restaurants, uh, but I am not aware of uh, any issues or any variances that may uh, be re being requested or allowed in that area. So we could take a chance to do a little more research there. Yeah, I, I think that's that's uh, that's fine. I think uh, at the same time, um, you know, I'd be curious, or licensees and staff can 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 research uh, what are those um, options in restaurants being implemented. If it's, I mean, it's it's easy to imagine the scenario that uh, Jackie says, you know, putting something that's actually three feet in height on top of a booth or the back of a booth, and it accomplishes the six feet. I wonder what other configurations. For example, you know, tables in the middle of a floor. How does that get? Um, you know, what's the what's the technical solution? How do they comply with the six feet uh, requirement, or do they at all? I I think that additional research, as uh, Loretta is suggesting, would be helpful. Are we? <clears throat> I just want to be clear that the additional research would be done in conjunction with a variance or as opposed to postponing today's decision. Sure, we could do that. Great. I see nodding heads. Okay, excellent. Yes. <clears throat> okay, um, let, let's continue and, and we can revisit, of course. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, oh, let's just make sure, is there anything then with, um, in A and B of number nine that my fellow commissioners want to discuss in further detail. Um, the question I had about B, um, because right now I'm going forward on the idea that six feet is six feet, but we do have this circumstance in the restaurant industry where you can go shy of that with the plexiglass. Um, 
but there's still space between tables. I don't know what the industry would be in terms of pushing your chair back, et cetera. I know that the average gap when you shut down the one machine is four and a half feet. Um, can anybody tell me whether that gets any less than that or whether we would want to have something in there that says, you know, and or no less than X feet? Because unless I'm sort of guaranteed that four and a half space, uh, I, I'm not really comfortable. So if anybody can just tell me about what the industry standards are in these machines to make sure when we say this, we're not getting to two feet with plexiglass without intending to. Jackie? So um, to that point, um, I think that's the average distance if you, if you shut off one in an average bank. I don't think it goes less than that. But my question was, um, which uh, is, we have situations where we have more than six feet between a slot machine. Would, would we be expected under this, we'd be required then to turn off alternating machines, even though there's more than six feet? Or conversely, if we have five foot nine inches, could we put up the plexiglass rather than switching off every other machine? So if it's a minimum of four and a half feet right. with plexi. I think six feet is six feet is six feet. Can we agree on that, commissioners? That yeah, I, I think if you if you reconfigure the floor or have very big machines with enough space uh, that you already accomplished the six feet, I don't think there's there's a need to disable a, a, a slot machine and then now you're away twelve feet, let's say. I, I think that and that's, if it's uh, short, that's not the by, intention. And if it's short, uh, Commissioner Zuniga, by three inches, that that would require a plexiglass then, correct? Is that what you're suggesting? Right, the way it currently reads is that, uh, you know, because in many instances, the six feet is very hard to accomplish, then you do this or uh, by installing the plexiglass and, um, you know, and, and removing the chairs. So I think Commissioner O'Brien's so point, point was that she wants to make sure that, that um, <clears throat> with plexiglass that we have at least so that general four foot, two inches separation with plexiglass, if it becomes, let's say two feet, mm. somehow, oh. three well, feet somehow, do we require another disabling of a seat? Is that correct, Commissioner well, Ryan? Well, what I'm actually trying to get at is what is the minimum equivalent right. of taking out every other? And is that what we feel comfortable with being the minimum with plexiglass? Right. But also because putting we, distance in, I think may also address Jackie's question, which is, if Encore yes. has the ability to reconfigure, so they are, you know, five and a half feet with plexiglass, as written, they'd still have to have a disabled machine in between. It so you would, you would, yeah. So you you would substitute maybe B to read that that uh, in in no in no in no case there will be um, you know gaming between. Um, patrons in, in slot machines of anything less than say four feet. Yeah, I'm wondering if we can actually put a, a measurement in there, which most of the licensees will know they satisfy by the every other and or in Wynn's case, because in maybe MGM as well, if they have the ability to reconfigure, they know we, we are in a comfort zone of what we think complies with the public health well, <clears throat> and then working their machines. Actually, maybe we're conflating these. Uh, can we take one at a time? So let's take mm -hmm. Jackie's, uh, Jackie's question. If you're able to achieve six feet or more between gaming positions on the, with respect to slots, B is concerning for that. Well, so, B, B is, is unnecessary. Right. Well, or, or we, just, we, we would say unless six feet can be achieved. Right, that was going to be my just right. unless six feet is achieved. That's it. Right. That, that, that would be that would be on B, correct, Commissioner yes. Cameron? Okay. Yes. Now, so that takes care of what is um, not really a problem, right? Unless six feet is achieved, and and you, and Loretta, you may think about whether that can be more artfully uh, crafted. And then, to I think um, Commissioner O'Brien, correct me if I'm misunderstanding your concern. But do we want to have some kind of a minimum um, between plexiglass, you know, right. or, or, or players? Because um, Jackie's point of being able to reconfigure and you're at, you know, five and a half feet, do I need the plexi? Well, now I'm at 
three feet do I need the plexi? I mean, because right. they may not necessarily have a configuration that's a line of shutting every other off. Right. So um, I think then that would be up in A, right? That we would want to clarify that. Or a separate one. Or a separate, or, uh, yeah. I mean, a, maybe a C. You could say that there shall be a minimum of X feet right. uh, between machines that are separated by plexiglass. Right. And I think we probably should address it rather than even if we can be confident that there really is few, there would be few circumstances where there would be less than about four feet. Let's put, let's put it in as a C. Yeah. Okay. Like a minimum okay. length. And, and, and it's, four, it's four and a half feet. The, the, the number that everyone who's more familiar with this is, is comfortable yeah, with. I was going to suggest if we look at the footnote at the bottom, that references to four and a half feet. Right. But uh, it, it is approximately, it, it, the reference, the information I have is that it's approximately four and a half feet. So our smallest distance is four, four feet, four inches. You know what, let's be careful. Yeah. Um, hmm not to create a, inadvertently a problem. So we've, we've heard an approximate of 4.5. Our goal is to, because we all know what it, it looks like to, you know, the slot machines typically, um, but there are some corner kind of situations where perhaps it would be really, there could be, um, it could be closer than let's say three feet. Do we want to say something on the line of 3.5 feet? Um, I'm not comfortable with that. Okay. It's, it I sounds like I, I, the four and a half, you know, I, I was obviously uh, um, hoping to get assurances that was a standard, uh, but the reason I asked the question was my concern was this, and, and at what, how low are we willing to go? Is four, is four feet four inches enough? Um, you get less than that, I start getting uncomfortable with well, you want to think about, you want to be really reasonable in terms of if restaurants are, are, are opening, you know, aisles and, you know, what the space is. If you think about even, you know, the width of your kitchen table or your desk where you're sitting right now, um, what that distance is. I'm trying to imagine scenarios of other venues where there is activity allowed, you know, walkthroughs. So, well, if, if you're in a booth with plexiglass, you are much closer together than, you know, right. four, four feet, frankly. You're, you're probably, you know, you're almost head to head with someone other than the, the plexiglass. So, I, I would right. be comfortable. Opposite ways. You're exhaling opposite ways and you're there for a finite period of time and then you're leaving. Well, is except that for slot machines, you're directing. So, you're what, about, what about airplanes, I wonder? Don't, let's not talk about airplanes, yeah. <laughs> please. I mean, it's like, please. there's, there, uh, my point, my point is that there's, there's, any one of these measures can be taken, uh, you know, to, to a point that is right. difficult to implement. And that's what I would want to caution us against. Well, that's right. Why so we, trying that, to that's comply a, that's with what the intent of the public health restrictions are, but in a manner that makes it the most workable. I was yes. hoping the answer was four and a half feet absolutely takes care of them. Apparently not, because Encore has some four feet, four inches. So How are we, at the base. Are, are we comfortable with four feet? I four would feet. be. I would yeah, be. I'm curious to hear from the, I would be as well. Do any other licensees have anything that's less than that? I mean, I'm just trying to get a sense of distancing. I've heard Jackie say four, two, four feet, two inches. Four, oh, no, four, it wasn't. Four, four. Four, four. four, four. So, um, it, Commissioner Cameron suggested four feet. How many of us would be comfortable with, if I could just take sort of a sense what I think maybe I haven't heard from Commissioner Stebbins, but I see Commissioner Zuniga, Commissioner Cameron's shaking their heads. I would be comfortable with four feet. Four feet I'm okay with. I'm okay with four feet. And if for some reason somebody has a deviation of, of three foot nine inches, again, come talk to us. But I think if, you know, what we really are, we want to be practical here. We're trying to um, achieve the distance, the typical distance between um, uh, every other, you know, that's achieved with every other machine being disabled. I, so, I'd like to ask feet our feet. Or, or unless you have the six feet. Exactly. Right. Yes. With uh, with our new um, our new uh, C. 
Commissioner Summers, I think we're all set. I think the, I think that um, I'm not hearing any of the from any of the licenses. I think we're good um, to say four feet. Okay. Do you have that language? Because you could do, you could then take out the disabled slot machine if the minimum is four feet, either right. by distance or by disabling. That's yep. what I'm thinking. You combine it to. Does that make sense, Loretta? Yep. I think we would want to include something in there about chairs being moved from disabled machines. So we right. can still have three items, A, B, and C, but some jurisdictions are allowing chairs to remain uh, from machines not in use. So um, I think we'll end up with three items. Uh, Loretta, do you want to read through if, if yep. you're in a good spot to do that? Yeah, please. Um, so read through C the new the new item. Well, a A remains the same. A remains um, the same. B uh, B. Have, I, I probably put the minimum distancing in there. There shall be a minimum distance of four feet between slot machines that are separated by plexiglass. No. No, that's not right. No. We're not, I think that, I think that the goal is to have every other slot machine will be disabled, correct? No, you not can, you can accomplish right. it by disabling exactly. it. Exactly. Right. Or distancing. Configuration, distance or, or disabling would then comply. And At then, a minimum, every other slot machine shall be disabled. We are, shall be disabled because you can't achieve six feet. We know that. Um, we're, I, my understanding is that we are replacing the requirement of disabling the minimum disabling of every other machine with the requirement of the four feet minimum correct so um uh so we're we're saying if you're going to separate from plexiglass because you cannot achieve six feet you have to have a minimum of four feet between Okay. Um, but yeah. if you do disable a yeah, machine, I, yeah, I, I, I was for some reason reading it incorrectly. At a minimum, it has to be at least four feet, and um, with every other slot, it, you wouldn't have, say anything about every other slot machine. That's right. Have a new you can, that would say disabled machines shall have their chairs removed. Right. Yes. And then we're not even going to reference the six feet. You can accomplish it however you want, disabling machines or putting five. That is a minimum of four feet. Four yeah. feet. Yeah. yeah. It looks like Seth, are you going to say something? Yeah, just a question. When you say the minimum of four feet, I, the, you know, the devil's in the details where that's measured from, but I presume we're talking about nose to nose, four feet of the seated player, and that's yes. the measurement. Yes. Thank you. Isn't that, is that the standard measurement, Loretta? What? That they're doing this. It, it's the, from the. That's the, the the nose to nose is this the measure in in every you know in every metric that I've seen. When they do the right. essentially middle of the seat to middle of the seat. Middle of the seat. Yes. Right. Don't put the outside of the slot machine to the outside of the slot that's machine, right. which turns into you know a lot more. Yeah. Right. yeah. Nose to nose really feels quite personal. <laughs> It's center to center, no. I suppose. Yeah, right. middle of the seat to middle of the seat, as opposed to the machine. Do we um, need to clarify you know. that? Uh, pardon me? Do we need to clarify that? No. It's, 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 you know, it's where the risk lies. It's the people. No, I'm just or talking about clarity of the measurement so that everybody, as long as we're all aware, that's what we're talking about. If, if, does that, was that what you were all assuming when we were talking about achieving uh, six feet without plexiglass? Four feet with plexiglass. Right. You can say Does as that all sound good to our licensees. Center of Pardon me. Excuse me. Eileen was saying, and I think it makes sense. Say, as measured as from the center of the seat. Of the seat. And that it's everyone's very clear that it's middle of the seat to Yes. Thank you, Commissioner O'Brien and Commissioner Cameron. Thank you very much. Um, I'm looking for the um, licensees. Does that um, does that raise a particular concern for you? It certainly is very consistent with the uh, guidance here in Massachusetts. Okay, hearing none. I think we can move on to item 10. Okay, this we're is on just table getting games. 
easier and easier as we go along. Um, <laughs> she says positively, which I so, love. Um, so you reviewed three options for social distancing for table games at your last meeting, and these appear on pages eight and nine of the packet. Uh, consistent with our other conversations, the first group gave uh, the highest level of flexibility to the licensees to operate the table games in a way that maintains increased distance and to monitor for no congregating and to allow the installation of plexiglass between dealer and players. Group B had a focus on blackjack style tables, required plexiglass between the dealer and required at a maximum four players per blackjack style dealer with no poker being allowed. And the no poker is at this initial reopening stage, uh, all of the licensees do not intend the, the poker. And group C for the blackjack style tables had a maximum of three players per table with plexiglass installed, no poker, no craps, and, and no roulette. Uh, ultimately, uh, the IB recommendation language uh, that we are offering, um, which appears in your shaded portion on uh, page four, and is a conservative measure, is requiring plexiglass dividers, which separating the dealer from the player positions and between the player positions at the blackjack style tables. No more than three players at each table and no craps, roulette, or poker until further notice. And largely for the craps and roulette, that was uh, because of the difficulty of either maintaining six foot distancing or installing uh, plexiglass. So again, initial stage of reopening, uh, this is the language that's uh, being suggested uh, for you now. And just a point of clarification on the installation of the plexiglass, is it fair, um, Bruce and Berg, to say that even if there was a fix with plexiglass, it really introduced a difficulty, for, particularly with respect to craps, in terms of being able to monitor the integrity of the game? Yes, that would be uh, difficult because uh, both those games are pretty verbal games and the plexiglass will uh, kind of inhibit, uh, you know, call bets and things like that as well. So just in terms of our ability to regulate, even if there was a plexiglass fix, it wasn't going to be great for um, us to regulate the game itself. And then, of course, D is, I think there was a, a, a consensus with our licensees that at this time, no poker. But stay tuned. Let's hope for the future. Um, let's get started in terms of, we all saw last uh, Thursday the picture of what this would look like for the Black uh, Jack style tables. The plexiglass uh, would go again six feet from the ground to separate the players. If it were installed at any place on the table, of course it doesn't need to go six feet, but rather it be the extension of, of um, of the natural three feet and whatever inches that would, would form from the table. Bruce? Uh, the plexiglass on the tables does not go all the way to the floor. It goes to the, the top of the table. So to the people are not separated like a, um, a voting booth? Uh, the, it is separated from the top of the table. Up the, it mounts on, on the top of the table, at least from what I've seen. Is, is there anything different from what you understand, Jackie, or Seth, that you've seen? I believe it uh, mounts on the top of the table and then it will back out off of the table towards the patron area, um, a, a, a foot, maybe two feet, and you kind of walk into it like it's a small booth. So that part does extend, that does extend from the floor up then, right? No, it doesn't go from no, the floor. No, no, it doesn't. Oh, it just comes out. Yes. Yeah, no, that's, and I apologize for any confusion. That's the plexi I was referencing earlier coming from the table that we have procured um, for our tables. We actually do not have any for slots at this time, which is gonna be a huge oh. business challenge for us with this requirement. Thank you. Thanks, Seth, that's helpful to know. So sounds like, 
MGM Springfield doesn't have the issue that we discussed earlier with respect to slots, but it's an issue that you wouldn't be able to achieve to be a little short on top. Is that the, the same problem that uh, other licensees, well, it's just would be you, Jackie, um, Encore for table game? Do you, do you have the same issue that you can't get quite three feet above the table or whatever? That's the same issue, yes. Because they've already all been prescribed and built. That's right. It goes up to the equivalent of 511. It's one inch short from the top. Ours, ours is 511 on the table. And so just to be clear, when it's when we extend out, it just extends the table length so that the individual's body would be stepping in. Their legs would not be protected. Correct. It's it's 18 to, to 24 inches out for he, you kind of. Oh, working. that's and okay. Then, but that's it's, substantial. Out, mean out into the table, Bruce, right? Pardon me? You mean out in over the table? Or yeah, it, 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 the stay, it sticks out past the past. individual but not down to your legs. So that that's significant. That's a tripping hazard at, at that point, yeah. Right, so that's significant though. Uh, you said 18 or 24 inches? It, it, it depends, because uh, uh, these are somewhat custom made mm -hmm. uh, uh, with it. So, you know, it's something that you actually step into from the ones that I, I've seen. Commissioner Zuniga already said that you don't transmit through your feet. So Commissioner Zuniga, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think I think the risk is on the you know on the transmission via the the mouth and the nose. So um, I think that configuration works. It uh, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and that's pretty much uh, used all all across the country by everyone that uses the plexiglass dividers. Same design. Commissioner O'Brien, do you think we take the same approach with the six foot and then address the variance down the? Yeah, that would be my take. I, I, I like the way 10 is written, taking the same approach we did with the others. Commissioner Stebbins. I'm fine. You, pardon me? I'm fine with that. Excellent, thanks. Commissioner Cameron. I'm comfortable as well. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Commissioner Zunica. Yeah, I guess I'm the only one saying, you know, if we know already it's, you know, 510 is achievable, but that, I'm okay with the way it is. And all the way through, A, B, and C. Everybody, yes? Okay, good. All right, no changes. Okay. So, ready? Occupancy. Moving on to occupancy? Yeah. Okay, so you discussed the options on page 10 at your prior meeting with the first column looking at building code occupancy and suggesting that you set a percentage of building code occupancy. Group B, looking at gaming positions set at every other slot machine and four players per table. Group C set at every two slot machines, uh, dis or two slot machines disabled, and three players per game. We've tried to add some actual numbers uh, to, to those options, which appear on page 11. Now, be mindful that if you base your occupancy level on gaming positions, We've attempted to give you some numbers here, but the licensees are going to need a chance to actually map out their floor and then get back to us with what they end up with for this initial uh, reopening um, and, and the actual gaming positions and you know have Bruce's team uh, verify those. So the form you have in front of you on page 11, the column on total occupancy tells you the building code occupancy for the gaming area of each of the three properties. And then gives you numbers for what 25% would be 30%, 35, 40, and 50% for each of the properties. 
The next column gives you what our group B, you know, every, um, every other slot machine removed. So this is sort of a ballpark number with where you ended up with in what you decided previously on slot distancing. So the total position slot positions under group B at PPC was 660. So if you allowed 50% over that, you'd end up with an occupancy of 990, 20% over at 825, 10% over at 726. And so you see those numbers for the three properties. Now, there is a, another document that did not make it into your packet that um, uh, Bruce and team circulated last night. And I can try to share that with you. And these numbers, Can you see that? Not yet. No, not yet. Well, you know, I, I wonder if it's because I'm not the host of the meeting. I did test this out this morning and I was able to share it. <clears throat> try, try one more time because that shouldn't matter. So just try one more time if you pull it up and, and share. But with that said, it's no easy feat so Loretta, do you want to email it to me and while you're talking i'll try and figure that out that'd be great karen okay. i will do uh, bruce could you email it so i can keep talking sure thank you thank you bruce um so uh the numbers that uh, karen will try to pull up are based on the gaming positions that are allowed by each licensee's license. So at PPC, that number of gaming positions is 1,320. At MGM, it's 2,547. And at Encore, that number is 4,630. So you could think about using those numbers as your baseline. Uh, for uh, setting occupancy levels. The, can everybody see that? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Yep. Uh, so the, the caution on basing your occupancy on the modified gaming positions that you end up allowing for the phase three opening is that those numbers may fluctuate as the licensees reconfigure their floors um, and that's not something we can't deal with you know we can we can certainly deal with that um, but I just want to point that out to you um, basing occupancy on either building code some percentage of building code occupancy or some percentage of allowed gaming positions under the license has the feature of being a fixed number. Well, I, I for one, um, think that uh, we might be better off with a percentage of the, um, of the building code. Um, I think there's a lot of measures that are already take place and maybe I should back up. Uh, I think this is the one area that I think we should be most flexible and wait and see how people begin to occupy and, 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 and congregate and adhere to measures that we could, um, you know, that, that, that uh, the staff, the IEB can, can, can you know, uh, reconsider some of these um, uh, total maximums and, uh, and and modify accordingly. Uh, but having said that, I think um, there's um, the building code would be in my mind more appropriate because there's uh, you know if the, 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 if the floor is expansive enough that um, um, people can be just walking around keeping six feet apart with their masks on, that. Um, 
you know, they may not necessarily be engaged in gaming at all times, uh, which is why I believe the, um, the, the building code is more appropriate in my mind. Yeah, we don't have much guidance uh, for uh, this type of hospitality industry uh, yet. Um, the existing percentages for retail and grocery stores is, is 40% uh, now set by the administration. Now, I, I think the parallels are you know, uh, limited in terms of their utility, but I just put that out there to you for uh, a term of reference. I'm sorry, there's grocery stores in what, Loretta? Uh, retail. And retail, so malls and that sort of thing, or just a retail establishment freestanding? Both. Both. There's another measure for smaller retail based on like a, a, a number per thousand square feet. Uh, but was, those are for smaller uh, shops. Okay. In this instance, um, I think echoing what uh, Commissioner Zuniga is saying is that perhaps having a more conservative number at the beginning with an understanding that we would monitor how uh, demand is is managed and and how the numbers are um, are formulating in uh, in accordance with the public health metrics and possibly increase that accordingly over time, um, barring any other instructions from the federal or state government. In other words, if we started a, a more conservative number upon opening and revisited in two weeks, we could maybe increase. I, I don't know others think about that. I was actually suggesting that it could go both ways, either way, right? We could decrease or increase as we, we always, see. I think know. one would argue it's always easier to increase. Well, I, I, uh, I'm looking at the how Rhode Island opened, where it was very limited with an invite only plus a guest. They're still in that phase, my understanding is. Um, I would feel more comfortable going with some sort of percentage over positions in the beginning with the hope and expectation is that that would be raised um, as we got more guidance and, and restrictions etc i think it's harder to to shut the tap off if we start off too high yeah i also wonder why you can socially distance it's not like a mall where you're window shopping so if you're not gaming what are you doing I think keeping the numbers lower will, um, on the more conservative side at the beginning, will allow our licensees the uh, ability to, to um, put in place all of their training, uh, make sure to get the kinks out. Uh, you know, it's unlike an, the grand opening of, a, of um, the casinos where those kinks always show up, but you can ad address them. Uh, in this case, those kinks could put people at risk from, their, from a health point of view as opposed to your service point of view. And so the idea of uh, thinking a little bit more conservatively, but with, but, but with a, a model that's acceptable, certainly. Um, my, my challenge is as I look at these numbers, I'm not really, not really um, familiar with figuring out the number for employees, the percentage on top of, it's easier for me to imagine gaming positions in light of our discussions today. You know, so if every person were seated. So yeah, and I know if chart, I missed it, I'm sorry. The chart on page 11 does include uh, numbers for the personnel that would be anticipated to be in the gaming area at any given time. So the last column on the right. Yeah, if you could just want, yeah, so. Page 11. Yeah. Uh, PPC is 17. Um, and, and you know, you can see. Oh, down here. I'm sorry. Yep. Okay. Oh. Loretta, may I ask where this number was obtained? We had a much higher count. Yes. Yeah, well, question. I hate to do yeah, yes. um, Bruce, you're going to need to jump in there on. I'm, that I'm sorry, you're, you're talking about which the employee number, Jackie? Yes. It, it was a, a, an approximation from uh, the senior supervising gaming agent of each of our properties. 
can we go through that then if, if the to the extent that the licensees want to give us a little bit more insight on their expectation for people on the floor uh, particularly personnel sure so i'm not sure if this number um a couple of issues. One is in terms of counting people who are coming into the gaming area, we also have people who would be going to restaurants um, and occupying those and the staff um, that goes to those restaurants who would pass through our number counter. Um, you know, I don't know if this accounts for additional uh, PAD, uh, the cleaners that, that we're intending to have on the floor or, um, yeah, it, this seems like it's just the gaming it, it's gaming yeah. security and didn't we include cage people as well Bert? yeah it was the gaming games department security uh the slot personnel and a cage and we were just taking a rough estimate of an average shift so uh these were the four departments obviously the new ebs the cleaning people would be a number that but we did not include that one we weren't and sure and service people, all the people who are providing all the services. So it would be really helpful for me to understand gaming positions, and, 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 and I'm, I'm chiming in, but I want my fellow commissioners to also chime in. The game, if in light of today's decision, if you have, if, if, what would be the what would be for let's say i'm going to ask each of you what would be the ideal percentage over the number of gaming positions let's assume right now all gaming positions using that last chart what number what percentage could um could meet your expect conservative expectations at the beginning what percentage? You know, we looked back at C and we considered C last week. And upon reflection, it seemed too small to me, but I had no, just gut instinct. I, I'm having really trouble figuring out <clears throat> because I don't understand the personnel number well enough. And I do appreciate, Jackie, you're mentioning the affiliated services that people are coming through, and I'd like to hear from you on that. I know that's very different for each licensee. So we could just talk, if we talk full all gaming, uh, all, all gaming positions based on the chart that uh, Loretta just shared, um, plus employees, then plus some other percentage. Jackie, are you in a position to walk us through that right now for your analysis? Well, you know, we, we've really actually just focused on the gaming area and the amount of circulation that's available and how we can socially distance within that, within that number. So, you know, we've been more focused on, um, on the first proposal, which was uh, based on occupancy. On occupancy. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, but you have a number in mind. You don't have to share that right now. So let's reverse engineer. Sure. If we did that based on gaming position. Based on gaming positions, we almost think that we're going to have um, at, at any given time, we could have almost, you know, 800, 900 employees in there. If you look at the restaurants and all the ancillary services, the increase in security, the gaming agents. Okay. And, and so, EBH total gaming positions group and yeah, then just I don't the have restaurants that. alone, if you look at just the restaurants between Fratelli, Red Eight, and Duncan, we have about a seating capacity with the socially distanced at about 500. Okay, helpful. And then, you know, there's obviously On Deck Burger, which adds another 215 seats, and then the associated staff with those uh, numbers. And, and Loretta, um, I don't have your number in front. What's the total gaming positions for EBH? Allowed under the license is 4,630. Uh, can I mention something? I think if the analysis is on gaming positions, I think that we should assume that only applies to patrons. And so then every additional staff is not part of that calculation. 
Um, conversely, if we're talking about all overall occupancy, then we need to include, include the staff. You could do a layered approach where it is a percentage of gaming positions for patrons and getting a sense of the requisite personnel that would be necessary to staff that, make sure that it doesn't exceed a certain percentage of capacity um, so that you're not in a situation where we're going higher than we really want to. Yeah, that also, um, you don't want to incentivize staff reduction in any way by the number right. you're setting. Right, that's what I mean. So if, we, if there's, to Jackie's point, if the assessment is how, what's the healthy, socially distant, economically effective way to reopen this based on the space on the floor, and then we maybe got to factor in, okay, and how do you staff that appropriately such that everyone's comfortable with everyone's fire code capacity and that sort of thing. Maybe this has to be multi-layered. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, 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 think, uh, I think that staff, by the way, is going to be instrumental in helping enforce all mm -hmm. the measures that we were just talking about. So I, I think, think the there's number, an, incentive, yeah. an incentive for us to make sure that they also have, you know, uh, you know appropriate amount of staff. Yeah, I think our number has to make sure that we can uh, affirmatively say the number of employees is considered in occupancy level. Um, the the other consideration is, you know, obviously our floors are fairly large and there's a, a lot of room for circulation um, as opposed to queuing people outside. So we're trying to avoid queues on the outside. Jackie, did you, when you looked at this from the standpoint of the gaming floor and all the restaurants with the socially distanced measures, did you come up with an approximate percentage? Of the floor? Of, of the, you know, Building what code. what does that mean? Yeah. So if you if you look at the occupancy load at fifty percent, let's say, uh, okay. using the socially distance uh, load factor of eleven square feet, then you're at it would come to approximately nine thousand eight hundred. So nine thousand eight hundred versus. So 9,800 was 50% of the building code occupancy of real Correct. human beings. Where the gaming Correct. positions right now is 4,673, 4, uh, is that right? 30, 4630. Yeah. 4630. Okay, sorry. If we added then that number plus another 800 to 900, if we added another 1,500 to 2,000, that would get you about to 7,000, right? If we added another 2,000, that gets you to 6,600. And, you, and you're up to 9,000 based on occupancy level. Right. And if we did gaming positions that are actually available versus the full, it's substantially re reduced. Right. Of course, what I'm thinking about is occupancy level assumes more and more people who are not actively gaming. Right. And those are going to be people who you are managing. You're going to have to figure out your social distancing. They're going to be clustering. And that that's a bigger challenge. And I wonder if we want to ease back from occupancy level and think about the real people who would be actively gaming. That's why I'm gravitating toward the gaming positions, because that is uh, where we started our discussion today. With, of course, some cushion around those people who are, are going to be waiting, who are going to be queuing, uh, <clears throat> If we did that, uh, now let's just go to, if, if, every, if, if others have comments, now chime in, but I was going to ask Seth and Lance, too, to think about this number. Lance, uh, Seth, are you in a position? Oh, I guess it's just Seth, I'm sorry. Yeah, no. I, I don't have, me. sure, I don't have in front of me the staff numbers, but similarly to, to Jackie, you know, our numbers are much higher than 108 when you factor in the variety of different staff that we cross the floor. Um, Honestly, I think that occupancy numbers are a lot less critical to us at this stage than the 
than the gaming position. I mean, if, we, if we're going in the direction of what we heard earlier, it's going to so significantly restrict the number of gaming positions that we have in play that that's going to naturally drive the occupancy level. I mean, we would, um, you know, we're going to be, because we don't have Plexi, we hadn't planned to have Plexi, the, the reduced number of slot machines that we'll be able to offer um, will be, it, you know, when we're able to reopen, will be so much less than we anticipated that, um, uh, you know, our, our occupancy numbers aren't going to be, I think, anywhere close to these percentages of total occupancy. Um, we we think that um, so we're going to have to reevaluate um, what's feasible. Um, Commissioner O'Brien mentioned, you know, opening in a way that's economically feasible. Uh, the direction we're going, we we just have to. I think our group. Our team has to regroup and see if there is an economically feasible way to reopen. But, um, so, Seth, you're 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 saying now that you had not contemplated in, in using uh, plexiglass at all for slot machines. That that's just not an option. That um, MPM. No, no, we. Entered. Yeah, we don't have. That's not something we'd be. Um, we planned on procured or would have available for a near term reopening which effectively means that if there's no leeway on the six feet that our, our slot number goes so low that, um, you know, we, we have to kind of revisit the entire model that we were planning to open with. So some of our prior analysis, I think, um, is, is not relevant um, at this stage in terms of staffing levels and what we would have open and what we wouldn't. And, and I'd like to echo what Seth has just said as well. I think, you know, we had not planned on plexiglass either. We, was, we were, for better or worse, looking at sort of the industry standard and understand that that's, that's not where the commission has to go. So it, it would be um, a consideration for us as well. Yeah, same for us. Um, you know, given the conversation we had, uh, I don't know, an hour ago regarding height, um, you know, sort of a, a, a new addition that I saw last night. Um, so yeah, just really need to figure out um, if the number of gaming positions then goes down to 440, which I believe is option C. Certainly there are financial considerations that we need to, uh, need to work ourselves through. And then as a practical matter, as it relates specifically to occupancy, and I think Jackie brought this up a little bit, is 50, 5783 is our floor. That doesn't include the food court, nor does that take into consideration uh, anything to do with racing. So as we manage, um, potentially, uh, capacity and folks entering our facility, um, you know, that adds another 800 in building capacity right there. So just to be clear with uh, licensees, this certainly the topic of um, plexiglass came up last Thursday. The topic of six feet tall, I believe, I believe, uh, first I saw of it was, it was last evening. And, and certainly, so you're saying now that even though Massachusetts is expecting it in terms of the guidelines where we are in Massachusetts, that you will, you're suggesting that six feet will not allow um, you to oper open up the slot machines and we're just raising this after passing number six earlier, whatever number it was, eight, nine. I'm sorry, are you referring to no, I thought I thought we had an issue around height and we, were, yes. we addressed it. Uh, it sounded as if uh, what, where we are wasn't going to work and it sounded as if six inches short uh, no. might be a challenge. And well, six inches, I think we made it very clear that we're going to um, make sure that if it does present an unworkable public health challenge, we'd have to revisit, but that we're hopeful that we would be able to have the executive director simply issue a variance in light of particularly other minimum standards for foot separation. I think I heard um, at the time, Mr. Stratton said that they had an issue with respect to one inch being short on plexiglass. I think he later corrected it and said, oh, that had to do with tables. But you didn't say ever that you were going to be not able to um, open up with the introduction of plexiglass. 
Yeah, I think uh, is honestly, that a firm? Is that can we say that that's a, the that that if I were you know we were to call your CEOs that that is in fact the decision? No, I don't think we've made a decision yet. We we're we're we have to evaluate it. But until we receive this document last night, which really is effectively option C, you know, we had never our modeling all along had not contemplated those reduced levels of um, gaming positions. And but so when we saw this but last night- it isn't night, reducing. It's actually, it's actually increasing. As I understand it, we're not requiring you to disable um, necessarily as many machines because it's a four foot minimum now. So, but it does require plexiglass installation. Right. Right, which we, we which is the safest measure for all of your patrons. We haven't done that in other jurisdictions and haven't um, haven't planned to do that yet. So it's going to have to be. Um, can we get that? Can we get those in place? Um, is it you know one of the reasons we haven't put it in place is that our experts haven't recommended it as as um, you know a best practice and there's increased cleaning and issues that come along with it. So that's why we haven't as a company adopted it. Um, if that's going to be the only way we can operate here, which wasn't our plan, we're, we're going to have to um, evaluate when can we get those in? Um, what's the cost? How do you, that, there's a lot of factors that we need to evaluate um, in okay. connection with mandatory plexiglass, which Again, just wasn't on our in our planning until this stage. So, um, for slots. When when uh, Jackie mentioned industry standards elsewhere, I assume that is disable every other machine um, with no plexiglass. Is that right? That's correct. And and you and know masks. we're we're for, and masks. Yes. Yes. Um, and and uh, do people and, and drinking or are, are you willing to do no drinking? No, I, I think MGM. Are you willing to I do no drinking? It's important to our guests. Yes, no, it's critical. But it's people critical. are coming. People are coming for an experience. Right. And I the I think the 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 heart of the issue is that we're focusing on um, um, different requirements in a vacuum, and it's really multiple layers of of requirements so we yeah. need to, to take a, to go back i apologize um we, we need to go back and look at all of this holistically just as our public health sector experts did when they put together our seven point plan it's not just one thing it's multiple things it's multiple protections for our guests and taken together that uh, what we're doing here, you know, we're balancing risk. That's what we're doing. Anytime you open a business, you're balancing risk. Yes. We need to take the document that was provided to us last night and see where that puts us because um, there's a number of things in that document that are simply different. I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm simply saying different than other jurisdictions. Yes, and I appreciate, excuse me, um, just one minute. I just want to make sure that when you keep on mentioning it was provided last night, we did have six hours of discussion last Thursday. That's and certainly enough. the introduction of plexiglass as probably a measure that would mitigate the, in, the, the impact of drinking while gaming, given we, here we are in Massachusetts and the public health considerations here was certainly on the table. Um, so I, I just want to make sure that everybody who's listening today, this is not a concept that we introduced last night late. The document was shared with you in advance of today's meeting, certainly last evening. And I believe you also had conversations with our staff. So I just want to you know, clarify that this wasn't a surprise um, discussion. Maybe it's a surprise to you that we may have come to a consensus this way. Um, not not suggesting at all that we haven't okay. had, we had ample discussion. Yes. Uh, five hours of discussion, what have you. But when you get to the final product, you have to continue to do the analysis mm -hmm. and, and, and take a look. And all we're saying is, I think we're saying as an industry, is we need to consider all of the various um, things that, that, that we will need to do um, to open. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually, I was, I mentioned, I had that point 
last Thursday that I think any one of those of these measures may be at least feasible in the abstract way. Uh, but when we layer them together, we, there needs to be that analysis as to what is overall uh, the impact and uh, the feasibility and the cost benefit. Sure. And one thing that, that I don't know that, um, and it's something that we're actually discussing in other jurisdictions now, is just the air in casinos, which is so much different in a positive way uh, than um, retail businesses and different things of that nature. Um, the fresh air protocol, I, I can't speak for the other properties, but I suspect that uh, we're not much different than, than everyone else. Um, we have a minimum of a 75% air now, the maximum of 100%. Obviously, uh, we're filtering at MERV 14. We're doing 10 to 12 um, exchanges uh, per hour. It's those sorts of things that um, make us actually much different than a lot of other uh, indoor facilities. And it might be something that uh, we as an industry, um, and I'm not suggesting this commission, we as an industry uh, probably should have focused on more as well in, in, in helping you understand uh, the uniqueness of this, these facilities and the state of art um, HVAC systems that we have in place. Um, okay. that, is, that is, again, it's, I'm sorry, that again, oh, thank it's, you, Pat. Really, it's really an important layer. It's one okay. of the first things that we thought about and our public health consultant thought about. So the practice in Massachusetts is currently for indoor restaurants, this is an indoor facility, to achieve, if you can't achieve six feet difference uh, and you want to drink or eat, then you do have to erect a plexiglass mm -hmm. of six feet. <clears throat> Is that fair, uh, Loretta? Am I in any way misreading that in terms of where we are right now with respect to guidance out of Massachusetts? Uh, that uh, appears to be the restaurant guidance now in phase two in Massachusetts. I guess the point is, is this a different, is there enough of a difference between a casino and a restaurant? Are we considering every factor? I think that's the point. That's right. And, and, Without additional guidance, we won't be able to guess that, I don't think. Um, I think that it is fair to say right now, if when people are seated and hoping to have drinks or eat, then they need to be able to be six feet apart from each other, unless they're separated by a non-porous uh, material. <clears throat> and so plexiglass, we had even seen a picture, I know, last week of a, of a potential cure, a mitigating, uh, I think it was, it was just a model, so it didn't go up six feet, that was noted. <clears throat> and so now we are hearing that that is not a workable option. I think we have already, uh, we can revisit this right now. Commissioners, do we want to still uh, continue with what we've, we've um, noted as our requirements at this time? Or do we wait and not give any guidance to our licensees today and postpone um, any decision in light of what they're saying that's non-workable? We had hoped to be able to give guidance that's consistent with what we anticipate the expectations of the state to be so that they could move ahead on a, on a runway that we know is 10 to 14 days. Um, I'm Commissioner O'Brien. Well, I mean, I think in terms of the purpose of last week and today, going forward with what we know, the criteria in Massachusetts are currently, um, and equating as best we can with other jurisdictions, I think we've been consistent with that. Um, if what the licensees are saying is there is a cost benefit analysis that has to be done in light of more certainty they've gotten from today, um, I don't think that from a public health standpoint, absent anything from the governor's advisory board on phase three and or specific to casinos, from where I'm sitting from a health perspective, it wouldn't change where I come from on how I, you know, voice my opinion on these requirements. Um, but I can respect the fact that they want to go back and reassess. Um, I don't know that it changes anything we're talking about. Um, 
The only thing I think would benefit from more specificity for me is some of the occupancy numbers in terms of, um, it sounds like getting more accurate sense of the personnel that would be required under these circumstances, a better sense of what is the seating capacity of the restaurants, the potential for people queuing up, et cetera, to get a better sense of if this is the workable plan, you know, how do you do it in a responsible way that maximizes their opportunity? And maybe so, to me, that's a number that I'm not so sure everyone who's on this call is prepared to make a choice on today. And, and Commissioner O'Brien, thank you. We, we just got a little derailed from that discussion based on the input that, based, that they wouldn't be able to even guess the number of employees given the fact that they might not be able to even open. So um, that would reduce the number of employees substantially to zero. So, um, which is a consideration, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would be interested in if the licensees think, I know that, that we were trying to give them that two weeks to, to prep properly, um, but if there's information we haven't considered, um, I, you know, I would be interested in that, meaning, um, you know, more about the filtration system that their experts looked at and apparently, um, um, you know, that may not be something that we factored in. And secondly, what, you know, knowing about this conversation today, what would, I think they can make, they, they're fine with restaurants and meeting the six feet requirements, it sounds like. Um, I don't know that there was any issue around table games, but it is around slots that there is an issue here that we're trying to evaluate. So I, I am I'm fine with, you know, obtaining more information if that would be helpful. It would be with respect to, I think we have a consensus because I think we all agree the fact that this, the, um, that they were close enough on the plexiglass for the table games that of course only involves um, MGM Springfield and Encore does not address uh, PPC. So I think, and, and this is the time uh, licensees to speak up, Our, you know, the table games, all table games, even including those for not 50% of the table games, but all the table games for blackjack would require plexiglass. That would be the expectation for all, all players. Is all, or would that be an acceptable fix for all the licensees? Because we as commission agreed, I wanna make sure that there's no consternation that hasn't been raised by the fellow licensees. That's fine with us. Thank you. Yeah, the that was that was not our plan that we're working we were working toward, but we it's more achievable. It, um, and so, long story short, we're we're okay with um, it on blackjack tables. We right. Your we proposal was fifty percent. We're going to be and, and 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 of course one of the issues just to clarify the reason why we would impose it is not to be unfair to all the licensees we know these are additional costs we know that it impacts your business model but we would not want to offer further protection to one employee who is the dealer than to the one who would be not protected from the players am i correct fellow commissioners on that one that that's sure. why okay. yes yeah. All right. We, so when we understood that, and 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 we do, you know, it, from a procurement standpoint, it might limit how many we could open initially, but um, but that is not as significant of an issue for us. So and okay. we understand totally understand okay. the rationale behind that. Thank so you. I think uh, Commissioner Cameron was trying to also, as I'm trying to, just point out where we have real re some work to do or think about at least. We have agreed on the drinks, given everything that we understand that the state would expect, that they will not, they will only be served to those who are seated. Licensees, does that present an unworkable problem for you? Come, it presents, uh, uh, I'll jump in, it presents, uh, in, I would say a very significant enforcement challenge and staffing challenge to enforce. Um, Right, you've mentioned enforcement, but in terms yeah. of the business model, uh, enforcement, I understand. Yeah, because we don't serve drinks to people wandering around anyway, so it's only served at 
to, while they're gaming. So it wouldn't impact business wise and, anything. It would just be the. Yeah. And to clarify, the bars are not open under the current paradigm. Once bars open, this will be a different issue for you. Okay. Um, but right now, they wouldn't, there wouldn't be an opportunity for any patron to be served a drink. Am I correct, licensees, while they're standing around, milling around, because they're supposed to be wearing masks? Is that our understanding, commissioners? Okay. Yeah, they don't do that currently. Right. And, and, and then we, we talked about the soft drinks, the self-service uh, soft drinks that will be. Uh, so I just want to be clear that we haven't, that everyone is okay with that in terms of licensees. That's okay as you can be under our current circumstances. All righty. That's correct. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, occupancy level turns on, I think we can do, um, I was hoping we would be able to resolve today just using some great, great math with the understanding we were gonna move ahead. Do we need to now, given today's discussion on social distancing, do we, um, we have our licensees are saying to us that there's a potential that that is a, a game changer for them to impose that requirement. We have, with, without, the, without knowing that, we all agreed that that made good sense in light of the, the current um, public health standards. Do we need, do we want to pause now and reinvestigate that or move ahead with that requirement? I'll take a straw vote. I, I think we should pause. I, I, I think, uh, you know, it is, it is really a, we, we need to calibrate here and find uh, what's, what's doable. Okay. Um, if any one of these in the aggregate tips the, you know, um, the balance in the other direction, you, you know, we need to hear it. And um, I, I think there's, there's been now two discussions, a lot of research um, as to, you know, what we, what we value, but, um, one of the things that we clearly value is whether this is feasible at all. Um, so we need, okay. we need to hear, we need to hear from them uh, and, with more specificity later. And I will, we will ask um, Karen and team to find out exactly what the challenges are with respect to slots. Is it supply? Is it procurement? Is it costs? What is it that makes that an unworkable uh, fix for the, for the opening? Commissioner Stebbins? Oh, you're mute. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, and before this conversation started, I was uh, reluctant to go with total occupancy, again, based on our concerns about aggregated crowds around the floor. Um, you know, whether column B works or column C works, I think that's a question that obviously our licensees are telling us they need to do a little home more homework on, and obviously getting an accurate count of personnel considering all these other standards that we're overlaying, we need a better count on um, staff that's gonna be on the floor. And what about the slots? Are you, do you want more information or would you want our, our earlier uh, sort of consensus to stand? Uh, I'm okay with our earlier consensus to stand, but again, I'd like to hear from our licensees after they've had a chance to go back and look at these numbers to get more accurate. Okay, and Commissioner Cameron, I think that you suggested getting more information, so. And I think the issues are interrelated, so I'm fine to pause. They are. Mm -hmm. Take in the additional information um, and, you know, really have a, make sure we're considering every, um, every issue that's been raised. Right, and, and, and to the licensees, we, we want, you know, we're hopeful that you are appreciative of you know, the challenges that are here in Massachusetts as you know, in terms of where we are with our public health metrics and that you keep an open mind to consider this mitigating um, option because the health of patrons and employees, we all agree is paramount. With that said, we wanna be fair, but we obviously need more information if this today presents um, a real challenge for you from your business model. So, um, I think then uh, we have a document that is really close, Loretta, if we can um, address the, plex uh, the plexiglass issue. 
because I think then the occupancy one will become much more, uh, you know, an easier one to resolve. Commissioner Cameron, you're agreeing. Yes, I am. Okay, and Commissioner O'Brien, you're okay. Yes. So, you know, sorry that we um we can't conclude with a uh, um, guidelines that will propel the the conversation forward for the the next steps, which of course come from um, further up uh, in terms of the the Baker administration. But we need to resolve this because this is such an industry specific challenge that it won't be helpful to them if we don't resolve it at this level. Okay, um, we have some homework to do. Karen, do you need any further guidance from the commissioners? No, I, I think that's helpful. And you know, it's, th th this does narrow the issue. I, I understand we're all working in real time and you know, each meeting we've had, we've narrowed the issue. So this is helpful um, in order to really focus on what dis actual decisions need to make and making the right decision. So I'm comfortable with taking a pause. Let's do it right. So I'm good with that. Okay, um, we'll need to look at our schedules. I think we want to keep, um, you know, our cadence going quickly. We want to be cognizant of the licensee's needs. Uh, so everybody, if we, we just want to make sure that everyone is aligned with the, we have all the proper information, full information, all the challenges spelled out, get the employee numbers, and then we reconvene. We have a meeting tomorrow on a, a lot of great business. I don't, I, I'm not going to start to, to do the scheduling from this point of view, Karen, we'll leave that to you. And yep. then I'll make sure we get it marked up with a proper notice um, as soon as possible. Licensees, does that work for you? Chair, I just want to yes. say that we're, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Chair, just, sorry. So, is that Seth it's or Pat? Pat. Pat? It's Pat. 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 Hi, Pat. I just wanted to thank you again. Look, we're, we're all in uncharted water here. We're, you know, it's, it, we're all doing the best we can. And Absolutely. Really, really, really do appreciate um, the consideration that the commission gave in the hours that they put in on this. And, but, and it is, it's better to get it right. Um, and I'm sure we'll, 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 we'll work through this as well very, very quickly. Um, and I will give, I will provide, I want to circulate to my fellow licensees, but I will provide you some additional information on the HVAC systems as well. We just did the very yeah. same thing in I, another jurisdiction. I do think that it was understood early on when you presented your guidelines to us that we are really fortunate that all three facilities are really so um, built so new that you really do have the state of the art HVAC. So I think we have appreciated that fully and taken that into consideration. But of course, I think there was a specific request for that. And so I think that would be helpful. But that said, I really think, um, you know, we want to look over employee numbers. We want to look over the, the benefits and, and the challenges of plexiglass. Sure. And I think, um, you know, to quote some, many of our friends right now, telotons and plexiglass would not have been a bad thing to invest in at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well said. I'll leave it at that. All right, so all of us, uh, all the licensees, again, thank you for patience with, with all of us as we, we um, you know, try to make sure that we're understanding your challenges and also trying to align ourselves properly with exactly the expectations here in Massachusetts. So um, with that said, any other comments from my fellow commissioners? Commissioner O'Brien? I just want to thank everyone involved, particularly I know Loretta and Bruce uh, and Burke, how much work you've put in on this, particularly over the last handful of days. Um, much appreciated, I think helpful to everyone involved. Um, I think we're close um, and I'm hopeful we will get to resolution. Um, hopefully with guidance from the advisory board that maybe answer some of these questions for us too. Um, Commissioner Cameron? Nothing additional, thanks to everybody. Okay, Commissioner Stebbins. No, just thanks to our good staff and we'll, we'll get there. Commissioner Zuniga. Yeah, thanks to everybody, uh, staff, licensees. Uh, we learn, we need to learn from, from you as, and, and as Pat says, um, these are, um, unusual and uncharted times and, and the best we can do is to try to get our collective minds to work in the right direction. So we'll, we'll do it again. Excellent. And uh, again, thank you licensees for um, your time last week, your time this week. It's essential. We will continue to keep all of our channels open for good communication. We have um, interim executive director Wells and her team 
Bruce Burke, they're all accessible. Please uh, make sure that any detail that you can imagine that might be pertinent to our next discussion is shared. And you know, our, our goal is to not be an impediment to your reopening plans. We also will keep in mind the, the health and welfare of all the employees and the patrons and you folks. So thank you and we look forward to convening. We'll keep the schedule going. And with that, I need a motion. I move to adjourn. Thank you, Commissioner. Second. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner uh, Stebbins? Aye. And Commissioner Zuniga? Aye. Thank you, everybody. Okay. And to the entire team, uh, all those who helped on this particular item, and to the everybody who's working behind the scenes, we're going to see you all tomorrow on a lot of work. Thank you. And for this meeting, we adjourn. Thank you, everyone.